Bandra Jaisekara Samaka. My guest today is Michael Rohan Sauja, who is a, who's more known as a rugby player, but now he's taken into cycling. So this is, uh, let me show, this is Rohan's second book. First, Rohan first wrote a book on Australia. He traveled around in Australia. I think that was known as uh, Bikes, Babes and Blokes, right? And then this book he had written about the mo about motorcycling adventures in Sri Lanka. And Rohan, uh, welcome to Pratikade. Thank you. But uh, I thought this is very timely that you have come out with this book because we need this support. What made you write this book? I just wanted to write a book. And uh, since I like mo riding motorbikes, I thought I'd just go around the country and um, record all my impressions for other people to read and learn about. I also rode bikes in the 70s and 80s in Sri Lanka, but didn't cover the whole island. So I thought I'll do it on a bike this time. And it took me four years, four years riding to uh, get the book finished. And uh, why I say that this is so important, after the Easter Sunday attacks, we are find it very difficult with tourism, and you come out with this book. Will you take this to the world? I want to. I'm taking some books back to Australia to sell. And, uh, and I've, of course, I give it to a whole lot of motorcycle magazines, motorcycle clubs, so they lost, publicize the book all over the world. And I, I didn't know that you were riding from school days. Not from school days, from just after we left school. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, haven't you said that, you know, where, you, where your father had this problem with the cops? all that and he had to save you from the cops when you were riding, that was after school? After or? school, yeah. After school. Yeah, once I was playing rugby at the CHNFC. So. Yeah, but I, I, re, I read this, the forward, it's beautiful forward by the bear, yeah. the Peter Thorm in Australian Motorcyclist magazine, but he also rode with you in Sri Lanka. He came out to ride with me and I took him on a ride right around Sri Lanka and asked him to lead, you know, go where he wants, stop where he wants, take whatever photographs he wants. And he wrote an article in the Australian Motorcyclist magazine. And he's going to write another one too, because after he heard the, what happened here, he thought he'd give Sri Lanka a plug, as he called it. Very interesting uh, uh, introduction by him, sorry, forward by him. He talks about the beer bottles, the different sizes. He talks about the cops and uh, Batikalo and the colas. Yeah. He talks. What was his impression? Did he read this book? No, he hasn't. So when you go back to Australia, you will give him a copy? Yes, when I go back to Australia, I'll be giving him a copy. Now, Rohan, I'm not going to talk much. I would want you to take our viewers yes. through this book, where you started. I think I'll let you do most of the talking, all the talking, because that's what is important. Take us through, take our viewers through this. The book has 13 chapters. It covers a period from 2014 to 2018 where I, I went overseas and came back, went overseas and came back. And on each of those occasions, I uh, went for different rides on different parts of the country. And I recorded the impressions in, on my camera, in my brain, and uh, went back to Australia and then wrote about what I had seen and experienced before it got, it sort of disappeared from my memory. So that's why it took four years to cover the entire island. If I went in one, I could have done it in one year, but then I would have lost everything while trying to write it. You know, I wouldn't have remembered everything. So that's the reason I have 13 chapters there where I covered it. And where did you start from? I started from Colombo always, in my friend Jeremy Rajaya's house, and then decided to go. I went with other people, I went alone, just explored. Most of the time you travel alone? Not most of the time, but sometimes I've done it, yeah. Can people like Jeremy Rajaya ride these bikes? Yes. He He's still it. fit? Yeah. yeah. Right? He's, yeah, still, he's still He's still uh, fit. So let, let's let's take uh, let's tell tell our viewers about this. The tea planters, tea estates, and motorcycles. Let's talk about that. I mean, take your time, Rohan. Oh. It's your time is all yours. Take it and explain. Now that's an interesting one. I have a school friend called Tarikoma. He was a planter, and uh, he he he's a rider too. Uh, he has his own bike. He doesn't ride a Royal Enfield. So one day he said, let's go for a ride into the mountains. So I said, okay. So he, the first stop he went to was one of his friends who was also a rider. Um, if I remember correctly, the estate was Hootville or something like that. What's the place? Hootville. Yeah. Uh, no, that was the second estate. I can't remember the name of the first, it's in the book though. And uh, we stopped for the night there at the planter's bungalow and we had a nice dinner discussion, drank some beer. 
And next day we went to another estate, none of his friends' place, not very far away. But th those days, that particular time, it was raining. So we had to stop before about uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, when the rain started to come down. And again, we stayed at the planter's bungalow and then came back again. So I didn't do much riding on that trip, but I certainly saw a lot of uh, upcountry tea estates and tea plant planter's bungalows as well. Give us your impressions about, especially because this will reach a lot of people, this program about up country, riding in up country. Well, motorcyclists love to ride up hills, down valleys, and have a lot of bends. That's what they enjoy most. And there's nothing better than going into the uh, hill country here with its uh, lovely tea estates and travel around the roads. And it's, it's something that is, it's also quite cool compared to Colombo. So it's quite, uh, it's quite a lovely ride. And no there's hassle. not much traffic. No hassle? After you leave Colombo, after you pass Avisavela, things get much easier. So you leave Colombo early, by about five o'clock or even before. And then once you get past Avisavela, the country is ours. The roads are clean. I mean, uh, there's not much pollution there, not much vehicles, and we can enjoy ourselves. Ron, you ride for fun, unlike these motorcyclists who go to work every day. How is riding for fun in Sri Lanka? You, Sri Lanka is a small island, so you can pack a whole lot of things, different things in, in one day. You can even start in Colombo, go through the mountains, and end up on the other side, on the, on the coast, on the east coast. So uh, there's a lot of things to see and do. But in addition to that, there's a lot of um, like waterfalls, historical sites, tea, tea, uh, tea plantations, especially up there, and the beaches too. So you can see a whole lot of things in one day. And that's something very interesting for, for riders. Now this chapter eight, iron butts to Batiklo. Let's take us through, you know, please take us through. All right. There is a, a group here called the Royal Enfield Riders Club of Sri Lanka. They all, they all ride ah, this Royal is Enfield. a Royal Enfield bike? Yes, these are Royal Enfield bike. Made in Sri Lanka or where is no, it? No, this made? is made in India. India. Yeah, and these are new bikes, down. but they are old, they are old British design. The engine is actually dates back to about 1950s. But they have modified a few things, but other than that, it's the same old bike that there is. Yeah. So, we what? joined this Royal Enfield Riders Club and uh, they decided to go to one day journey, right all the way to Batiklo. And we left early. How many of you all? Um, there were about five of us. And they all had their oil and fields. And we went. We went through uh, Avisavala, Pelmadulla, up towards um, Balangoda. Then turned down and went past Dialuma Falls and ended up at Vellavaya. Vellavaya. And Dialuma then, Falls to Vellavaya. Yes. And then we rode right across past Munragala to, uh, towards Arugambe. But before you reach that, before you reach Potuville, we turn left and there's a road that goes to, towards Ampare and uh, came out near Batikalo and we stayed the night at Batikalo there. That was a bit interesting because we ended up in the dark and um, I nearly bumped into a cow that was lying on the road. It was black and the road was black and the next day I saw the bike in front of me swerve suddenly and I just swerved and to see there was a big cow or bull on the road there. Completely obvious to us. You're not harmed? Not harmed. <laughs> we escaped. But that, how was that ride? I mean, how enjoyable was it? What, any special experiences? It's nice to go with friends. They, they all have the same um, sort of feeling for riding bikes. And uh, they always talk in bikes or something else. And when you go back there, it's like a, it's like a happy family sitting down for dinner in the evening. And we, we reflect on our trip as, as we have done it. And they have some fun. Then another, the chapter 10 of bears and elephants. Now this was a... This is important for you, know, I mean, if you could share the experiences in detail, we'll be happy because we have plenty of time. I took Peter Thomin. His nickname is The Bear. And uh, he's the uh, editor of Australian Motorcycle Magazine. So I told him, let's go to Sri Lanka and for him to write an article about Sri Lanka in the Motorcycle Magazine. So I brought him here and I showed him, let's go here, let's go there. He was quite happy. And over about five or six days, I took him from, from Colombo to upcountry, to Arugambe, to uh, Sigiriya, to Kandy, and he just enjoyed it. And uh, he was so impressed with Sri Lanka that he said, he said something very um, revealing. 
he said that he has gone to many countries in Britain, right around the world. And he said... But that's Lanka, on a motorcycle. On motorcycles. And he said that in Sri Lanka he had never met such friendly people and he has never accosted to ask for money on the trip. Whereas other countries, people are coming and you want to see a white person, they come and ask, can you give me some money? And that, he, didn't, he didn't have that at all. So then this, you say bears and elephants. Yeah. The, the bears means him. Him, yeah. Yeah. P Peter the bear told me. And the and elephants? elephants was where we stopped at Udubalawe and there's this, always this lone elephant by the side of the road. And uh, his name is Rambo. So for the first time in his life, he could go almost right up to this wild elephant and you know put his hand near him. And there's a photograph of him there doing that. Then you have this chapter 12, Up the Central Spine to Kilinochi. Please take us out, take our viewers through that. Up the Central Spine okay. in Kilinochi, that's chapter 12. I had ridden around Sri Lanka, right around the island. But I wanted to go up the spine from through the middle. And I hadn't been, I had come to Kilinochi, but gone towards Mulativu and then come down. So this time I thought I must go from straight up from Kandy all the way up to Kilinochi. And that's how I took, took a bike from Colombo early morning. And, and went, went alone? Went or? alone. Yeah. Went up to uh, Ginigatena, went down through to Gampala and Kandy, and then went right up Martale, Dambul, uh, near Anradpura, that mean Thale, right up uh, Wawunia and up to Kilinochi. And uh, I have, for my good luck, one of the motorcycle riders, Royal Enfield riders, is a colonel in the army. Sri Lankan army. Yes. yes. And he found me quarters at the Signals Directorate near Iranamadu Lake, which is quite quite interesting, a little bungalow. Not Colonel Mahendra Fernandu? No. Yes. Yeah. The, the colonel was Colonel Rajit Elvitigal. So you have so many our army officers riding these bikes? One guy. One, One guy. guy rides this. Yeah. So how was that journey? Because it's, it's, a, it's a quite a long journey. It's a long journey, but uh, I'm not a guy who generally stops to eat and everything. I just continue. If I see something interesting at, or some historical site, I'll stop and take some photos. So I just kept going and going and going. And uh, to my surprise, I, I reached there at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So you started early morning? At yeah. about 5 here. 5 o'clock, yeah. reached Kirinochi at 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock. Yeah. So how was the response you received on the way from our people? Or oh, you don't stop much, but No, still. I stopped and you know, had something to drink, you know, like a fruit juice or whatever. I don't eat when I'm going yes. because uh, you don't want to have a queasy stomach or anything while you're riding a bike. It's not so you enough. drink a lot of water or... Not just, a lot, but just yeah. when I feel thirsty, I'll have something. So then how did people respond to you? First of all, I have a fair face. Yeah, you look... I, yeah. I look like a foreigner. I yeah. turn red when I when I get uh, when I get hot or s start sweating, and uh, people think I'm a foreigner. But when I talk to them in Sinhalese, they get a shock, and uh, then they become my good friends. The other thing, good about it, is when you ride a Royal Enfield, yes. people want to stop and take photos. I've, I've been stopped on the road, and someone says, "Can I can I sit on the bike and take a photo?" I say, "Go ahead." So now, when you came to our office today, did people stop you or like in, in the morning traffic? What did they? No, this was just a run. Just a run. So just it was normal commuter run. So it's more in the village and all yeah. that when they stop. Then all those, I mean, your final chapter, but I need to go up to uh, chapter 4. But uh, chapter 13, almost to Mimure. Mimure is very famous because of the elephants. How was that journey? Well, I, I wanted to go to Mimure. But so, you said, yeah, almost. Yes. But uh, I went with a friend in Kandy called Rohan Balasure, who has a property there. So he said he was going and I said, okay, I'll go with you and I, I'll go to your property and then go to Bimore. Unfortunately, the day we went or the days that I was there was a prelude to a cyclone that was coming and it started raining and it got, just got misty and you couldn't see. And those roads are bad with jungle on either side and I thought I'm not going to Bimore. I could almost see it on the other side in the valley, but I never went there. And all three days we were stuck in his property, it rained. And I came back to Colombo in the rain, but I didn't go to Mimo. That's why you say almost to Mimo. Yeah, almost to Mimo. Then you have toured with Aussies, Indians, and Kiwis. What about those experiences? Well, that was we we, we had a there's a company called Enfield Riders in India, and they organized a tour of Sri Lanka, and they were bringing some foreigners, those foreigners that we, that were there. So they came and rented our bikes, and then they asked me whether I'd, I'd sort of help them, guide them along the way. So I went with them and uh, 
because there was an Indian guy leading. He didn't know the historical significance of where to stop or whatever. So I, I was the one who sort of helped them around. And in the evening told them what they had seen and everything. So it was very interesting. The experience with the New Zealanders and Australians, they enjoy the tour apart from there. Bike riders uh, generally are quite a disciplined bunch. They, they might drink in the, in the evening, have enough of beers or whatever they're drinking. But you tell you, 8.30 we are leaving, they'll be there at 8.30, ready to ride. They came here to ride, that's what they wanted to do, and they went off, happy. What was their experience? What did they say about Sri Lanka? They said it was wonderful. They enjoyed the, the countryside. They didn't particularly enjoy the big cities like Colombo. Getting out of Colombo is a mess. But other, I mean, once we cleared Colombo, it was a breeze, and they really enjoyed it. Unlike in Australia or Europe or the Americas, in Sri Lanka, they don't respect cyclists, push cyclists, or they don't respect motorcyclists. How did you manage? Because they just don't care. They just, especially when the bears, even the buses will just want to run over you. Interestingly, the, the bike has a unique beat to it. And it also has a loud horn. So when a group of Royal Enfields are going together, you hear this big noise and a lot of people get scared and think there's, there's an army convoy or something coming. And they tend to move out. And it's very easy to get past. It's very hard to get past a three-wheeler in a four-wheel vehicle. But it's very easy to get past a three-wheeler in a, in a, in a uh, motorcycle. And uh, you just blow your way. And even if they are the unbroken lines in the middle of the road, you can find a gap to go through. Can you toot the horn? Can you use it now? Oh, so it's, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful horn. So then they <laughs> let you yeah. pass. It's but even more powerful than some car horns. So, so they get the message. But there should be more respect, right? Yes, there should be more respect, but it's difficult. You know, when everyone's... No one travels in a straight line here. They're all weaving around. Because they have to weave around. There's potholes, there's dogs crossing the road or whatever. So they, no one travels in a straight line. I also realized, Ron, you are trying to promote the country of your birth. And you are doing a great service and plus motorcycle riding in Sri Lanka. You think this is possible? Motorcycle adventures in Sri Lanka could encourage more people? There, there won't be, it won't be mass market, but there will be people who are willing to come. So if these if this problems die down here, you know, the communal problems and everything else, we should be able to get people in about five months, I think, willing to come. No, it doesn't have to be bikes like this because I started from a C50, then my bike days, C90, then CG125 Deluxe, then CD200 with those big pannier bags, and then to a trail bike, and you graduate. Of course, I started with a tricycle long ago, and then you graduate. But can't we encourage groups, like you see in India and other countries, they travel in groups. It'll be an interesting thing, like tourism. You can, you can get there. There are, there are, the people who rent these bikes are people who want to rent these bikes. They're, they're not cheap. So the rental cost of the bike is high. You can go to some of these places that, that rent, they, there are lots of places that rent bikes, scooters and small bikes. And you find backpackers and everything going there. But that's a completely different market. These are guys who want to go, they'll, they'll ride Real hard. Real bikers. Yeah, they ride hard, they, they will party hard in the night, then they'll ride hard again. But others, like tourist backpackers, they can rent these yes. bikes and... Yeah. Can you just start this bike and see, because... This one. So the sound is also different. Yeah, you have that sound, it's like... Duk, 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 duk. Yeah. That's the characteristic beat of Royal so this is So this is a special bike. So this is a special bike? Yes. Now, and there are people who really want to come just to ride this bike. So they, they, they travel, they get this bike. You can rent these bikes here? Yes. And then ride? Yeah. We have already rented a few times. How much would it cost for anybody if our viewers want to rent it? How much would it cost? The cost for this bike is about between 45 and 50 US dollars a day. Between? 45 and depending on the period that they take it. 45 to? 50 US dollars a day. So that's about 7,000 yes, rupees, 7,000 rupees yeah. a day. Yes. So that you have to pump your petrol and then you can 
We give a full tank. You give a full tank, yeah. but then rest they'll have to do it. So you you encourage people. Yeah. But that is if they just rent the bike, yes. which we don't do much. Yeah. We, we our, our, our main marketing theme is we will organize a tour for you. We we'll lead you. We we'll guide yeah. you there. So that means we give them a package. But you think it will pick up this uh, motorcycle adventures? I'm sure it would. It's a niche market, but yeah. there will be people who will come. We what about this un uh, rambles in the southwest? Then you have into the misty mountains. You have unplanned overnight in Tanmal Villa. Rohan, we are on camera, but I want you to talk. It's your turn. They are not. They don't want to listen to me. They want to listen to you. <laughs> we. Uh, that was my first ride with Sri Lankan riders, the Royal Enfield Riders Club, and that was a big group. There must have been about 11 or 12 bikes, and we set out from Colombo at about six o'clock in the morning. But we went all the way down to Gaul. And then from Gaul, we climbed up through to uh, Hetipola, that place, and came out near Uduwalawe. And then went past Uduwalawe to Tanamal Villa. But being Sri Lankan riders, they wanted to stop and have a family, to have a smoke. And we got delayed, 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 and we reached. You don't like that, I know. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go there. Just right, yes. yeah. So we were on our way to Tanamal Villa. We were supposed to be there for lunch. And we only ended up there at about 4, 4 o'clock or 4.30. And I don't like riding in the night generally because I, the I, my night vision is yeah. not the best, not 100%. So I prefer to always stop early. There was another Sri Lankan guy there who had a, his partner on, on the pillion. And he said, he just told me, Ruan, he's getting too late. Why don't we find a place to stop for the night and we'll have some beers? So I said, more than happy. So while the others went back to Colombo, we stayed there in the evening and we enjoyed ourselves and in the morning came back. So that was the unplanned overnight there because we didn't plan to stop there. Do you find uh, ladies riding? Sri Lankan ladies, you know, it's overseas a lot of women, right? Yeah. But what about in Sri Lanka? I haven't really. I know in the Royal Enfield Riders Club, there is, there is probably one or two ladies that ride. But that's about it. Of course, you do get some ladies who ride scooters and everything. Yeah, but, there, but we want ladies to be adventurous, right? How in India, you do get a lot. Compared in, it's, I have a journalist friend who, who they really write. In fact, I, I send the details of this book and they are willing to come to Sri Lanka, but they ride. So, uh, but bikes like this. It's an easy bike to ride. It's a very comfortable ride because if you're seated down on it. It's, it's like an armchair. You're sitting in an armchair. Yeah, it's very comfortable. Yeah. You won't fall. You have the center yeah. one here. You have put the center stand. But also, but you wrote in this book, Ron, that if it falls, two people can't pick it, you have at least five people. No, no. Oh. If it falls, yes. it's difficult for one person to get, take up because the whole bike is metal. There's not a single piece of plastic on this bike. All full metal? Everything's metal. The mud guards, the, everything yeah. is metal. The tank, the side packs. Whereas a lot of the new bikes are all plastic. So they're lighter. But when this falls, one person is it's extremely difficult if you're a small guy like me to pick it up. So, uh, you need one other person to help you. But you said somewhere you need at least five. Wa once we, yeah, when I was going around the island, we went to uh, Mulatibu and then we went straight down to Kokilai. Now, there's a lagoon there, there's no Kokilai, bridge. Yeah. The only way to get the bikes across was on, uh, on fishing boats. They had to carry the bike and put it in the fishing boat. So, normally they're used to taking little scooters and all yeah. this thing, and two people can put it in. It took them five people to carry this bike and put it put into the fishing boat. Yeah. And that, that, that is with difficulty. So that was difficult. So yeah. how was that journey? On the boat? In yeah, the boat and then <laughs> back on the it bike. It was interesting. You had to sit on the bike in the boat. And the boat is rocking there and you're also going like this. And then you had to go to the other side and then they have to lift the bike out again onto the sea sand. And then you're struggling to gain traction to get out. But it was a hell of an experience. What did the fishermen tell you? They were cursing because they had to carry the bike. <laughs> So did they? I'm sure you paid them more. I had to pay them more, yes. No, take take us through. I, I told you I don't want to talk much, Rohan, because you need to... I mean, take us through. Why should you tell our viewers, why should they take up riding? Why, how could they enjoy Sri Lanka by, by riding? And tell us too. We just have about five minutes. That five minutes yeah. is all yours. I'm not going to talk. Well, uh, Bandula, there is a motorcyclist phrase that says, four wheels move the body. Two wheels moves the soul. There's something completely different about riding a bike. I'm not saying it's pleasant riding in a city, in a congested city. But once you get on the open road, there's a huge difference to going in a car 
uh, compared to going on a motorbike. Because your all your senses are alert. You have to be alert. Whereas in a car, you can just loll around. Yeah, you're continuously on the alert. And you notice things that you don't see in a car. And the other thing is, on a bike, sometimes you have to stop to, you know, get the circulation going as well. Or if you're hot and you want to have, because you're, you're not air conditioned or anything. So you stop more often. And when I see something, some attractive place, you know, like a historical thing that I've never seen, I always stop and take some photos and go around and ask questions. What about for the pillion ride? How comfortable is it? That's, that's a good seat for a pillion as well. Yeah. We, we have taken pillions because when, uh, when the Indian guys came here with the tour group, they brought a cameraman and a camera lady as well. And uh, I had to take the lady and all the men, they interchanged. So, and they found it very comfortable. They are Indians, they're used to riding these bikes. And they, they, they go, they sit sideways, most of the people, but they, these people wouldn't have. No, they were taking yeah, the cameras, taking. yeah. How was the lighting here? The lighting is quite good. Same. Can yeah. you show that to our viewers? Let's show the light. It's quite a powerful light. It's powerful. And the signal lights, all yeah. those are the basics. Ron Royal Enfield is a British made, yes. it's a British manufactured bike. But how come the British don't manufacture it anymore? This this bike is about a 1950s model. The engine and the, the gearbox and everything is about a 1950s model. The design as well. The Indian Army placed an order with the British company in the 1950s to get some get some bikes. British factory couldn't produce them. So they created a factory in India to start manufacturing because it's an ongoing order for the Indian Army. Then the British company went bankrupt in the, in the 60s or 70s and the Indians are still making them in the same design. And it's very popular around the world. And Sri Lankans have taken over? Yeah. Michael Rohan Sauja, thank you very much. The author of Motorcycling Adventures in Sri Lanka and my old friend from school, I wish you good luck and good health. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bandhu. Atikala. Bandhu Jaisekara Samkar.